All right, so we're here with module three, and so I guess we'll kind of get started um, a little bit. So for this particular week, we're focusing a lot on probability. And if we think about like probability and like how it shows up, you know, we usually think of things like gambling, him, gambling and like how likely something is. And, you know, what the focus is, focus or prospects or something are. We also tend to think of it as the odds or, you know, anything else like related to this, right? So, you know, if we think about like probably we all sort of like associate it. So while like, all these things are related, right? What's really going on is probability is the way we are quantifying randomness. So we move into this uh, segment where we move away from gut feelings And we try to systematically assess risk. So that's really what we're going to try to figure out, right? And so for this particular like segment and what we kind of learned about here, we're gonna focus on a special kind of probability, one that's often used uh, this is sometimes called a frequentist perspective. So frequentist. And we're interested in long run outcomes. And so what will likely happen in the long term. So basically what this takes out, right, is that it assumes that we have some outcome, right? So let's say the classic one is coin flips. It could also be, um, you know, taking depths, taking cards. or rolling a die. So what we become interested in is that if we repeat a trial, which in this case is like a, like a little experiment or a manipulation, um, we can figure out how likely certain outcomes are. So, you know, what the, something to keep in mind because of this, right? Is that if you think about things, right? You know, what we are saying is that in the long term, so in the long term, outcomes are predictable. But an important little note, in the short term, outcomes can be highly volatile.
So we also tend to assume that the outcome of one trial is independent or unrelated to another outcome. So what was, what was that? Well, so let's use this as an example, right? So let's take a new color, pick this one. So we'll say this is example one. So if we think about coin flip. So very possible to get 100 heads in a row. But this is likely, right? So it would be an example of a volatile outcome. But in the long term, the probability of a head is 50%. If we think about, you know, example two, of a dice roll. We know that there is, uh, it is very possible to roll a six, um, six times in a row. But we also know that the probability of rolling a six in the long term is one out of six times. So we know this, right? Uh, so if we, when we mean by that, right, there is something called, a, this is really important. I would really make a mark of this, right? The law of large numbers. Which holds or suggests anyway, I've got a different color, one that we haven't used maybe in a while. Ooh, what do you guys think about like this orange? Is that over many trials, true probability of an event um, will show up. So now I understand that all this is kind of vague a little bit and it can kind of seem kind of strange. So we're gonna work through a couple little, little baby problems real quick, little babies, ones that you guys can probably do, but we'll just sort of help clarify for uh, all of us, right, who are uh, listening and paying attention and doing the readings, which you all should be doing, right? So let's say here, right, um, let's say um, we'll start with an example problem and we'll use uh, 5.2 on page 207 in the fourth edition of the book. 
So this question asks, your friend decides to flip a coin repeatedly to analyze what their probability of a head. So we're looking at the probability of a head um, on each flip is, point, is one half or 0.5. So this is what he's trying to figure out, right? He concludes that the probability of a head, so he flips the coin 10 times. So we have 10 flips and um, observes a head, gets a head seven times. So the friend claims that the coin is not balanced since the probability is not 0.5. So this is question A. So question A says, your friend claims that the coin is not balanced since the probability is not 0.5. What's wrong with your friend's claim? So when we look at 10 flips, right? This is kind of short and it's not really like a long. When we're talking about long, we're talking about 100,000, 10,000, uh, a million kind of rolls, right? So when we, what we end up saying, right, is that um, 10 flips is short. Is it's or at least relatively short. And what we're saying is, you know, getting ahead can fluctuate a lot. Getting ahead can fluctuate in the short term. ST is what we'll call that. So not fair to say coin is unbalanced. Right, so that's the first thing um, to do it. Now, if we look at part B of this question, um, and it says the probability of flipping ahead is actually half, 0.5, what would you have to do to ensure that the cumulative proportion of heads falls very close to one half? We would have to flip it a lot, flip the coin a lot. And the law of large numbers, LLN, will eventually show the true probability. Okay, so pretty pretty easy so far so let's do let's do a different one right to kind of show again illustrate this kind of concept so we'll do 5.4 and this is again on page 207 in the fourth edition of the book and this is the airline death question so this question is asking right uh, airplane safety has been improving over the years. From 2000 to 2010, the average number of global airline deaths per year was over 1,000, even when excluding the nearly 3,000 deaths in the United States on September 11, 2001. The number of global airline deaths declined in 2011, again in 2012, and then hit a low of only 265 in 2013. In 2013, there were a total... Okay, so we have our information, right? So if we take... 2013, there were eight, or how many deaths were there? There were 825 million passengers and um, let's see, 265 deaths, is that right? Yes. So, with this one, right, so let's look at question A. What is question A asking us? Go back to a different color. So question A asks us, can you consider the 2013 data as a long run or a short run of trials? Explain. So with this, right, you know, when we think about a long run, we're thinking about, um, you know, like many, many, many trials, right? And the fact that there are 
825 million passengers in 2013. We can call this long. I think we feel pretty safe uh, doing that. No big deal, right? So that part is good, right? So question B is estimate the probability of dying on a flight. So dying on a flight. in 2013. So how do we go about um, solving like this problem, right? Well, it turns out pretty easy, right? And so this comes out to basically, we could just do 265 out of 825 million. And if we like actually did this right, so we have, it's like a point in the one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, or one in, because we're going out to the seventh, just place one in three million chance of dying. So arguably like pretty dang low, right? Not really like a big deal, right? And let's look at, so this is saying, right? Pretty low odds, like low frequency event of actually dying. And this is based off of long run data. And so if we take number C, right? And this is saying Raul is considering flying on an airplane. He noticed over the past two months, there have been no fatal airplane crashes around the world. This raises his concern about flying because the airlines are due for an accident. Comment on his reasoning. So what we're saying, like the big thing is, is like, you know, things aren't due. You know, we don't really don't, um, it doesn't, it's not the way like math works or that things do, you know, we kind of maybe are expecting it and we are looking for that, right? But we're also assuming with this, at least with this kind of trial that crashes are independent. So the fact that one plane crashed does not mean another one will crash because that one did, right? And so they were assuming they have no bearing on one another. So because of that, right, we're also saying that the risk of a crash is constant throughout a year. And so it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to say Raul's time is coming. And again, that's just because there's a lot of crashes and it's a very low, low risk event anyway. And if there hasn't been one, it's probably, you know, more likely than not, not going to happen since it's such a rare event anyway. So hopefully this kind of helped uh, illustrate some of these concepts and this will be helpful for you guys who are doing homework and stuff like that. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.